How to use artificial intelligence in any field. A few years back, Mark Anderson, the co-inventor of the first web browser, Mosaic, said that software is eating the world. Now, the same can be said of AI, which is built on top of software. Machines are becoming smarter and this is just beginning to eat the world. As software becomes predominant, more and more industries began to use it. Today, it is hard to find a company that doesn't use software. AI is in a similar situation and is grabbing hold in many industries. We are at the cusp of a major revolution that will move us from automation to cognition. We need to arm the leaders of tomorrow's business with the knowledge, tools, and the mindsets to help them drive transformations within their own industries. Recently, I gave a talk on the use of AI in dentistry, focusing on a sub-discipline called endodontics. If you ever had a root canal treatment, then you'll for sure know what I'm talking about. I work at the intersection of business and technology. I don't know much about dentistry, but as I did some research and learned more about endodontics, I found that fundamental concepts of AI can be used to solve a class of dental problems. There's a saying that for a person with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So, one may assume that I look at every business problem and I think AI is a solution for it. I, and I believe most part people, don't think that way. When you study engineering, for example, you learn a lot about how to use many of the tools and techniques. Then when you face a real problem to solve, you use one or more of those tools or techniques to find solutions. That's the same for doctors, lawyers, artists, and accountants. As for politicians, well, that's another story for another time. So if you know what AI can do, you can apply it to solve problems in any industry. You just need a little bit of help from the domain expert. In my case, I talked to a few dentists, endodontists, prosthodontists, and oral surgeons. My wife also happens to be a dentist, so I was fortunate to get educated on the subject over many dinner conversations in addition to the routine, how do I get my life together topic. As I started to explore, here's what I found. The dental office has moved from maintaining paper records for patients to digital records. Today's image capture systems also produce digital images that are attached to these patient records. Some of the data is categorical variables such as patient symptoms, medications, etc. Some of them are numerical such as the fee paid, time taken for procedures, and so on. Some are unstructured or semi-structured like the doctor's notes, email, and patient forms. Some others are images like x-rays, intraoral images, or CBCT scans. The question is, how can we use all this data? Images are one primary way that endodontists diagnose tooth problem. This means that we can try to use computer vision for diagnosis. As if to support my hypothesis, I found a few research papers on endodontics that is exploring the use of CNN or convolution neural networks for diagnosis. Typically, an endodontist would look at images to map out root morphologies. Complex root morphologies like this one must be clearly mapped out to properly fill in all the canals during the root canal procedure. Missing any canals would exasperate the problems later. An AI system could help the endodontist because it overcomes the human limitations of being able to look at only one image at a time. The AI system can use multiple images and even different image modalities to automatically map out the root morphology. Since dental offices have a lot of image data, computer vision will find a wide variety of applications there. On a relative scale though, natural language processing may find limited use. The point is that you'll have to understand the business domain to recommend a good approach to bringing AI into that domain. A use case for insurance processing is when machine learning can be used to automate approvals or classify potential fraudulent claim submissions. 
Since the volume of claims is high, it is impossible for human operators to look at each one of them for fraud. A system can automatically classify potential fraud cases with a high degree of certainty, which will improve insurance operations because a human operator can then take a deeper look at only those. Dental labs also classify their work based on complexity. For example, they can assign high complexity work to the more skilled technicians and optimize their processes. This is happening today. This whole thing is my small experiment of working with endodontics. The broader idea here is that as we introduce AI into different industries, AI experts will have to collaborate with the domain experts and build the machines to solve the real problems. If you're an AI expert, you might want to learn a little bit about the domain that you're using AI in. And if you're a domain expert, you might want to learn a little bit about AI's capabilities. Ultimately, in most domains, there's a strong collaboration between humans and machines for best outcomes. Humans are very good at certain tasks and machines are very good at certain tasks. And if we can complement them, then we get the best of both worlds. I'm not alone in sharing this message of knowledge and collaboration. Northwestern University, one of the most prestigious schools in the world, is starting an MBA I or MBA with AI and information program this fall. This program is a collaboration between their business and computer science schools. This innovative program will arm the digital leaders of tomorrow with a blend of management and technology concepts that will help them build thriving organizations of the future. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. For a one-page visual summary of this video, sign up on my website. Thank you deeply for giving me the motivation to do what I do.